We have some breaking news, everybody. Democrats are finally helping out Americans, and they're helping out our senior veterans with a new cost of living adjustment. Everybody, Social Security benefits can now be increased with this new bill signed by the House. So folks, be sure to stand to the end because I will be going into more information surrounding more stimulus payments and, of course, the latest news surrounding the Social Security benefits. I say to my Republican friends, and I do have some, <laughs> take back your party. You're the grand old party of America. You've done wonderful things for our country. You have now been hijacked by a cult uh, that is, is just not good for our country. So the House on Monday easily cleared legislation to provide veterans with disabilities an annual cost of living adjustment. This will increase your Social Security benefits, folks. Now, the COLA is used to reflect annual inflation for veterans' disability payments, as well as compensation for survivors. And this would increase at the same rate as Social Security payments, effective as of December 1st. Democratic representatives and even some Republicans are helping out our seniors and sending out more federal relief. It has been one and a half years since the crisis shut down the economy, and some segments of the population have yet to experience any real improvement. Unemployment still exceeds pre-crisis levels, even with jobs available in certain sectors. And the federal unemployment bonus ended on Labor Day, and this caused millions of people to remain short on food and behind on their bills. So, a fourth stimulus check could definitely help people out. It could definitely help people that are struggling to make the ends meet. Republican friends talk a lot about inflation. But if you want to talk about actually lowering the cost of living for people in this country, my plan does just that. By strengthening the capacity of our economy. So there are a couple of states that are sending out their own state stimulus checks. For example, in the state of California, they have recognized the need for help and have stepped up with additional state stimulus checks. Now everybody, a group of Democratic senators, including Ron Wyden of Oregon, Elizabeth Warren, and Bernie Sanders, have sent a letter to the president requesting recurring direct stimulus payments and automatic unemployment insurance extensions that were tied to economic conditions. Staggering reality. We believed that landlords should not have to bear this cost alone. So we provided more than $45 billion in emergency rental assistance. And that money is now getting into the hands of landlords around this country. These Democratic senators wrote that the crisis is far from over and families deserve certainty that they can't put food on the table and keep roof over their heads. Families should not be at the mercy of constantly shifting legislative timelines and solutions. So, hopefully everybody, these Democratic centers like Bernie Sanders, can send out more stimulus payments and help out the American people. I know it definitely goes a long way, everybody. A fourth stimulus check definitely goes a long way, and it will help out many Americans for sure. And then we have another letter that was written to Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. This was from 53 representatives, led by Ilan Omar of Minnesota. Now these representatives, folks, called for recurring direct payments until the economy recovers. And that will help ensure that people can meet their basic needs and shorten the length of the recession. So to be honest with you folks, most of the stimulus payments are coming from Democratic senators and representatives. And it seems to me like they're the only party that wants to send out more stimulus checks. Do you guys agree, everybody? Who is holding back our stimulus check? Tell me who you think is holding back our stimulus check, folks, in the comments below. And don't forget that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Rashida Tlaib are among two House progressives supporting a $2,000 monthly stimulus check for the length of the crisis. Hopefully everybody, President Biden can get the job done and send out more, and send out more help to the American people. Now there has also been talk about the automatic payments that could be sent when specific economic metrics reach certain thresholds. These triggers will make a stimulus check a reactive force in countering economic dips. Because let's not forget that the majority of Americans favor recurring relief payments. That's at least according to the data. Nearly two-thirds of all voters support $2,000 monthly payments to all Americans. That is for the length of the crisis. Plus, supporters include a majority of independents and Republicans. Everybody, the Urban Institute recently said that another stimulus payment could reduce poverty by at least 6.4% in 2021. Many economists are on board with this. A 2020 open letter from experts in the field argued that direct cash payments are an essential tool that will boost economic security. And then we have, of course, California. Gavin Newsom signed a new budget into law back in July, and this includes a stimulus check for about two-thirds of the state residents. The $100 billion California comeback plan is part of the $260 billion budget from Gavin Newsom. So it's great to see folks that President Biden and many Democrats like Gavin Newsom 
are sending out their own state stimulus payments. So, the Biden administration is not against the fourth round of payments, but the president recognizes their high price tag. He also has other priorities, specifically infrastructure and help for families. So a fourth round of stimulus payments could be included into the new budget reconciliation bill. Do you think President Biden can get the job done, folks, and send out more state stimulus checks? Tell me what you think in the comments below. Now, if you guys have any more questions surrounding the fourth stimulus payment, then be sure to leave them in the comments below. As always, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Good morning. It's good to see so many people, and there's not a lot going on the Hill right now. It was very active caucus meeting, as you can imagine, with a lot of priorities that are in front of us to undertake on behalf of the American people. Uh, we are, of course, committed to getting over the finish line President Biden's Build Back Better agenda, which involves both the bipartisan infrastructure agreement so we can fix our crumbling bridges, roads, tunnels, airports, mass transportation system, and also invest uh, in making sure that every single American has access to high-speed internet, particularly as we've seen during COVID because of the need uh, to be able to work online or be educated online, receive health care online, communicate with your families and loved ones online. We have the bipartisan infrastructure agreement moving on a parallel track with the Build Back Better Act, which we are committed to getting done in the next few weeks. Why? Because President Biden promised that we were not going back to pre-pandemic normal. We were going to build back better because prior to the pandemic, so many everyday Americans were struggling. Half the American people reported that they couldn't afford a sudden, unexpected $400 expense. In America, the wealthiest country in the history of the world. So the president laid out a clear agenda related to the jobs plan, the families plan, that's coming together in the context of the Build Back Better Act. Creating millions of good paying jobs cutting taxes for working families and middle-class families through the child tax credit, and making historic investments in home care, in health care, in child care, in elder care, in the caring economy, so we can lower health care costs for everyday Americans, lower child care costs for everyday Americans, and lower the cost of housing for everyday Americans by